guys and welcome to Hatta Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and that is ascariasis, which is also commonly known as the intestinal roundworm infection. So let's get started. So what is ascariasis? Ascariasis is an infection of the small intestine caused by the parasite called Ascarus lumbricoides, which is a species of roundworm. Globally, ascariasis is the most common human worm infection and is especially common in developing countries that lack widespread and modern sanitation. These worms use the human body as a host to mature from larvae or eggs into adult worms. The adult worms, which are also capable of reproduction, may grow to reach sizes up to more than a foot, which is approximately 30 centimeters long. So from this definition of ascariasis, we get that it's actually a roundworm infection that's very common in the world, especially in the rural or more poor countries. And it's actually an infestation of the small intestine by these parasitic worms, which are called Ascaris lumbricoides. So these worms can actually reach quite large sizes, and some of them may even reach up to 30 centimeters long. So in this image on the bottom of my screen, we see what the parasitic egg looks like, and then we can see what the juvenile worm looks like. And this is actually the female parasite and this is what the male parasite looks like. So the females are actually sort of usually thicker and much longer than the males. And in this image in the middle of my screen, this is actually the Ascaris lumbricoides roundworms, which are pictured post-surgery in a resected bowel. So this patient had a piece of the bowel resected and this is actually the worms which have completely infiltrated the entire area of the bowel. And this is actually what the surgical removal of these roundworms look like. As we can see, the surgeon is trying to push out as much of those worms as he can. And as you can see, they are spilling out in the thousands from this intestine. So now that we know what ascariasis is, let's take a closer look at how one can actually contract ascariasis. So Ascaris lumbricoides is known as a soil transmitted helminth, or an STH. The Ascaris eggs are found in the soil and in human feces. They get into the body when someone eats or drinks something contaminated with eggs. Most people with Ascarises got it by either putting dirty hands in their mouth or eating fruits and vegetables that weren't peeled, washed, or cooked. So as we can see in this image on the right side of my screen, it says, the infected individual contaminates soil with feces containing the helminth eggs and the eggs develop in the soil and other individuals are infected by eggs ingested through food or dirty hands or by larvae which penetrate the skin and in the infected individual eggs and larvae develop into adult worms which produce more eggs and of course the cycle continues. So this is actually how easily it is that one can contract this disease. So now let's talk about how the ascariasis parasite thrives. So as we can see, point one says the eggs hatch into larvae in the host's intestines. That means from here, this blue section, which is the intestine, we have the eggs which hatch into larvae. And the larvae move through the body by the bloodstream to the lungs. So this is this broken blue arrow, which shows the larvae actually moving through the body by the bloodstream into the lungs. The larvae actually mature here before entering the throat, and the person will either swallow or cough out the larvae, and if swallowed, the larvae will move into the intestine and mature into adult worms. And the female worms can actually produce about 200,000 eggs per day. And finally, these eggs will leave the body through the feces and can contaminate soils again. So now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of ascariasis. So many patients infected with this parasite develop no signs and symptoms at all. However, as the infestation inside the small intestine grows, the patient will begin to experience abdominal pain or discomfort, a loss of appetite, worms visible in the stool, vomiting, impaired growth in children, weight loss, nausea, diarrhea, and irregular bowel movements. So continuing with the signs and symptoms, in more advanced infestations of this disease, the worms may travel to the lungs of the patient, and if this occurs, the patient will experience fever, discomfort in the chest, a gagging cough, bloody mucus, shortness of breath, and wheezing. So how can one go about diagnosing ascariasis? 
So the most common method of diagnosis involves a stool sample. So once the sample is collected, it is screened microscopically for the presence of the parasitic eggs in the patient's stool. And it can be difficult for a doctor to diagnose early infestations as the eggs may not be present. So a doctor may also order some imaging tests which can help them to determine how many worms are inside the patient and to locate them. So some of the imaging techniques that we can use include the endoscopy to look inside the intestine, computer tomography scan, magnetic resonance imaging scan, an ultrasound, or even an x-ray. And in this image on the right side of my screen, we see the typical microscopic aspect for what the parasitic eggs look like. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of ascariasis. So anti helminthic medications, which are drugs that rid the body of parasitic worms, such as albendazole and mebendazole, are the drugs of choice for treatment of the ascariasis infections. These infections are generally treated for one to three days. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on ascariasis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.